Hello, and here we are at 2.4 already in our Unit 2. We're going to talk today about a man named Linnaeus. Um, and he developed a system of classification quite a while ago. He lived uh, from 1707 to 1778, that's the fancy hairdo and clothing here. And he, his actual name was Karin von Linné, and he went by Carolus Linnaeus. It was a Latinized version of his name. And he wrote this system of classification based on homologies, which is what we have been talking about. So let's take a look at what this system was. I'm guessing you recognize a lot of this. Um, <clears throat> the kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Um, you've probably been introduced to that several times. <laughs> So um, here it is again, and just make sure you know these and know the order that they are presented in. Um, the Linnaean system of classification used homologies to group species into larger and more general categories. So remember we talked about species being the basic unit of biological classification, and when we put species with similar characteristics together in the same group, that becomes a genus. Um, similar genera, when we put those together, will become a family. Similar family group together will be an order. Um, we put similar orders together to make a class, and similar classes to make a phylum, and similar phylums to make a kingdom. So helpful mnemonics for this evidently are plentiful. <laughs> uh, the one I learned when I was in school was the King Philip came over for good spaghetti. Um, quite honestly, I just sort of memorized them. That was easier than remembering some of these silly sentences. But there are a few of them here if you'd like to pause the uh, video and take a look at those, find one that is easiest for you, or maybe you already have these memorized. So if we just look at one kingdom, the animal kingdom, because that's probably the one all of us are the most familiar with, we can look at the way it's broken down into um, groups here. I just uh, have a few examples. This is not at all all-inclusive. Um, these are just a few examples. If we look at some examples of a few of the phylum within the animal kingdom, we have arthropoda or arthropods. Annelids would be all of the worms. Mollusks would be shellfish and chordates. Um, which end up getting divided into vertebrates as a subphylum. Um, and if we come over here and look at the vertebrates, which are a subphylum of the phylum chordates, we uh, divide that at the moment into these different classes. And you're probably very familiar with these because these um, are organisms that we are more uh, familiar with. We have um, fish and amphibians and reptiles and birds and mammals in there. Um, if we just look at the mammal class and we look at the subclasses there, we have monotremes and live-bearing placental mammals, and those are divided into several orders. We have um, elephants and carnivores and primates as just a few examples. Um, and then within that, if we look at the carnivores, that is divided into different families. If we just look at the family of um, cats, and then we can look at the genus of lion. We have Panthera leo, and that is the uh, name for a lion. And we'll talk a little bit more about that specific name. Um, and that is just one way of, of uh, looking at, or one example of looking at all of these classification categories, the kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, and you'll already notice that there are subphylum or subclasses or suborders sometimes because um, it's really difficult to classify all of these organisms. So here are just a few more examples of Linnaeus's classification system um, just outside of the animal-only kingdom. Um, here's an example of the common daisy is in the plant kingdom, and you can see each of the categories as we go down. Here, uh, it looks like uh, Linnaeus even 
gave the Latin translation of its species name, its scientific name there. Um, we have other plants here um, within the plant kingdom and it uh, listing all of the specific um, categories that it occupies um, as a plant. We have the kangaroo and the wolf, the dog, and humans as well. So one thing I think you've noticed is that the species name um, on some of these examples was, it was a two-word name. And that's an important thing that I need to explain to you. It's called binomial nomenclature. It's the scientific name. Every species is identified by its scientific name that uses binomial nomenclature. And binomial nomenclature, is the word bi means two. There are two words to identify each species. And here are the rules for that. First, we always write the genus name and we capitalize it. The genus name is written first. And then second, we write the species name and it's always lowercase. Um, when we are writing it by hand or handwritten, we will always underline the, the whole name. And when the two names are written typed, they are italicized, and they are always in Latin. That is their scientific name. Um, why Latin? <laughs> you probably wonder. Why not English? Well, not everyone speaks English, and if they're written in Latin, scientists from all over the world can understand them, and everyone knows exactly, very specifically, what they are. Um, and they are very precise. Common names are local, they're imprecise, People often call things uh, very descriptive words that are uh, talking about a very local variety, maybe, of some type of organism, and they can be very descriptive within uh, the language of that region as well. So uh, we use the Latin name just to make it more universal and more precise and accurate. Here are some examples. We have Quercus phalos and Quercus rubra. It's a willow oak and a red oak. And you'll notice it's capital for the genus word and lowercase uh, for the species name. And same over here. And they are both, uh, I, you probably can't tell very well here, but they should be italicized as well. So you try. Here we have an adorable little organism. And which is the correct scientific name for it? If you'll just take a moment. Uh, you can pause the video if you need to read all of the potential answers and then turn the video back on and you can check your answer on the next slide. Felis domestica. Number two was the correct choice. We capitalized the genus name, we lowercase the uh, species name, and we have, uh, have the whole thing in italics as well. So. They're both Latin. Um, oftentimes, the species name is a descriptive word describing something um, as some kind of an adjective. Uh, domestic is really the meaning there behind that word, and I'm sure you guys could figure that out. So I'm excited to see you, and I hope you can come up with your own really wonderful creative ideas for a four, because there's um, a lot of great things that I'm sure you are ready to do. So I'll see you in class.